Hi, and welcome to Gardener Camp. During these lessons, we are going to talk about bugs and butterflies, other no otherwise known as insects. Walk outside during most of the year and you can find all different types of insects. During the summertime, you can find butterflies fluttering about, grasshoppers hopping all around, and cicadas or other crickets singing loudly. Insects are part of the animal kingdom. They are arthropods, so that is their phylum, and they are in the class Insecta. So there are certain characteristics that all insects have. Their body is divided into three different parts. So we have the head up here in this section. So let me write head up here in this section. And the head contains the different sensory organs of an insect. So we have the eyes, we have the mouth parts, we have the antenna coming out of the top of the head, all things that insects use to um, sense the environment around them. Now the second part of an insect is the thorax, which is a really cool word, the thorax. So the thor thorax is this middle section right about here. The thorax contains the, the, the structures needed to be mobile or for the in insect to move. So all insects have three pairs of legs or six legs total. So we see one, two, three, three pairs of legs. Also on the thorax, some adult insects have wings. So they'll have a forewing and a hindwing and they would be right here in this section. Uh, right there. The last part of an insect body is the abdomen, and that's this long part down here at the bottom. So let me write abdomen here so you can see what that looks like, the abdomen. Now the abdomen, the function of the abdomen is for a few different types of things. Number one, it's for digestion, so that's where the food is digested. Number two, it's for egg laying, so the eggs are produced back there in that area. And last, breathing. The abdomen is for used for the breathing structures in that area of the insect. So those are the parts of the body of an insect. So again, they are divided into three different parts. Insects, again, have three pairs of legs. They also have a pair of antennas up here. That's one thing that sets them apart um, from other animals. On the outer part of an, of an insect, there is an exoskeleton, and sometimes that exoskeleton is shed. I have a beetle here, and this illustrates the different, really well the different parts of an insect. So we have a pair of antenna right here on its head, which is like the gray area, if you can see that. You can see his three pairs of legs. So one, two, three, six total legs. The thorax starts right here. Now he's right side up right now, so you can't really tell, but the thorax actually runs all the way back here. So these are wings, um, or, or type of wing, um, that are connected to his thorax right here. The abdomen actually starts underneath down here in this area. And again, the abdomen is where he digests his food and he breathes. Insects have very intricate details about them. On their head, they have their mouth parts and mouth parts differentiate between all different types of insects. So we were just looking at a beetle and beetles have a chewing mouth part. So do grasshoppers, so do dragonflies. So they chew up the grass or the plants or anything else that they wanna eat with their mouth parts. Now to illustrate that, here are some pliers. So their mouth actually acts like pliers in that they're grabbing on and they're tearing off the plant material that they're eating. So the chewing mouth parts are like pliers. Next, we have piercing sucking mouth parts. Now these are technical term, terms that entomologists have come up with. So a piercing sucking mouth part is like a mosquito. So a mosquito, you know, lands on you and makes a bug bite. But they, their mouth part, again, is called a piercing sucking. So let me illustrate that for you. Here I've got a little cup of liquid. So we can see that it's red liquid in there, kind of like some, uh, kind of like blood that a mosquito might eat. 
So their mouth part actually has a really, uh, like a really sharp um, thing that pierces through whatever they are going to eat. So they will pierce through the skin just like that. And then just like this dropper, they're gonna suck up whatever they're going to eat. So again, this is called a piercing sucking mouth part. Next, we have a sponging mouth part. And the flies that you see in your house or outside, if you feel them land on your skin, they don't really, they don't bite you. They just kind of walk around on you. You can't really feel too much, but they have a sponging mouth part. So just like a sponge that you have at your, in your kitchen, they're just walking around on you. You might feel some dampness after a flies on you, but again, they have a sponging mouth part. And last but not least, we have the butterflies. The butterflies have a siphoning mouth part. So they are going to put down their mouth part into a flower uh, and then they're gonna bring up and lap up any kind of nectar or whatever they want to get out of that flower. So to illustrate a siphoning mouth part, we've got a party popper just like this. So they're gonna blow out their mouth part and bring back up that nectar from those plants. So butterflies have a really cool siphoning mouth part. Another really cool, cool structure that all insects have is a compound eye. Actually, most insects have a compound eye, not every single one of them. But a compound eye has many, many different lenses or many different pieces of a puzzle. So to illustrate this, we've got a gathering here of different straws. And if you look through this, this might be a one compound eye. If you look through this, you see multiple different uh, pieces of what you're looking for that transmits back into the brain and makes one full puzzle. So all the pe puzzle pieces come together in their brain and makes one full puzzle. Now a dragonfly actually has 28,000 little lenses or facets, they call them, um, 28,000 facets in one compound eye. So they have to transmit all 28,000 images back to their brain and then it tells them what they are looking at. So how do you think that would change if you had a compound eye? What do you, how do you think you could see things like an insect? Okay, we've talked about the different parts of an insect, but we're gonna go through a few different examples of insects that we've caught down here at Gardner Camp. So you're looking at here, a dragonfly, and we have lots of dragonflies at Gardner Camp because they like to live near water. And we saw um, some of their larvae that we caught in the wetland in one of our other lessons, but this is what they grow up and they, as an adult fly around out of the water. So you can see this green darner has uh, obviously a green color, really thin, almost transparent wings. It has two pairs of wings, a forewing and a hind wing large compound eye compared to it, its body. That whole area right there is its compound eye. Um, the abdomen back here is black and white on a green darner. That is where they breathe, where they um, have their eggs, that sort of thing. We have another type of dragonfly here, and he has a little bit different coloration. He has some black spots on his wings which are different than the green darner. He has an even larger head, so you can see his big compound eye here. The wings, of course, are part of its mobility, so it's, the wings come off of the thorax, and this long part here is the abdomen. Now, dragonflies are our friends. They have chewing mouth parts, and they love to eat mosquitoes out of the air. When they're larvae, they eat mosquito larvae when they're in the water, so we like dragonflies down here at camp. Now we're looking at a couple really cool insects and the remains of another type of insect. But on the left-hand side, this over here is called a cicada killer. And it's um, in the family with bees and wasps, Hymenoptera. And they have chewing mouth parts. 
Um, you can see his two antennas in the front, his legs kind of sticking out there. Two um, really uh, pronounced wings. They are really, really large um, wasp and bee-like uh, uh, insects. They're over an inch long. Um, you can see his black and yellow, um, kind of like the danger sign back here on his um, abdomen area. Um, they have chewing mouth parts. They're solitary, so they don't swarm like a bee or other types of wasps. They like to live on their own, and their nests are actually in the ground. They can dig down into the ground and build tunnels to, the, to lay their eggs. But they go and they find cicadas on trees. And over here on this side, where I'm pointing here, this is the shell of a cicada. And cicadas you'll find a lot of times on trees. So this cicada killer will come and find these cicadas sitting on a tree, sting them, paralyze them, carry them almost the same size of what they are, carry them all the way back to their tunnel and pull them down into their tunnel. Now this cicada shell right here, obviously this isn't the real um, thing, but it's really cool to show this is its exoskeleton. So when a cicada starts to get bigger, all of different types of insects have an exoskeleton and it will shed its exoskeleton. You can see here at the top, this big hole where it emerges from the shed exoskeleton. So as you can see, these are about the same size, but this cicada killer can carry in flight a cicada back to its burrow. So that's pretty, pretty neat about these two different organisms. We're so glad that you joined us today at Gardner Camp talking and learning about insects. I'd like to challenge you to get outside and see what types of insects you can collect on your own.